Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it's uh, February 25th of 2018. And there's so much going on, so much talk about gun control, so much talk about the uh, terrific, horrible shooting at the school down in Florida and other subjects that I just thought I'd give you my two cents worth on this. So it's going to be a little bit of a rambling because I'm going to throw in some other items that I wanted to to mention. Um, where should I start? Uh, let me say, first off, I have, I worked hospital security for 30 years. And when I first went with YouTube, I made a, in 2005 or whatever, I made a series of YouTube videos about hospital security and some other sort of related subjects. They're in a playlist here. I don't think hardly anybody. I really haven't made any more uh, because I don't want to even think about that. Um, and plus two, uh, I, I quit in hospital security in the in 2000 now i did work uh i think in later in 2000 down in orlando florida at a hospital in the orlando area of florida at a hospital and it was contract security instead of being the 30 years i worked in kansas city area at different hospitals that was in-house security not contract security. Uh, the hospital in uh, Florida that I worked at, the uh, contract agency that I went to work for, I've mentioned this before, that I went to work, or I went, I went to them and I said, uh, I'm retired, I'm just looking if you have uh, some place you can put me, you know, sitting in a lobby checking people in and out or at a door checking people in and out or something like that, that, and it was like, oh, my God, hollered the other guy, you know, oh, this guy's got hospital security. OK, and, you know, so uh, we want you to be in charge of the contract out. You know, no, I don't. You know, finally, they told me to pay and it was substantially more than what the guys were getting. And I went ahead and took it. That was a mistake. I shouldn't even have worked. So I don't count that as hospital security the time I worked there. Oh my God, I shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have worked there. But uh, so I say, you know, I worked hospital security up until the year 2000 from about 72 to about 2000. I think it was actually 1999, November or something of 1999 uh, that I retired. Um, but things have changed, I'm sure, have changed so much, I hope, uh, since then that I, I don't want to be, but I'll probably be bringing some stuff up because that's, you know, some things are similar, some things work the same. Um, and so I'm probably going to bring that up, but about the, the shooting in Florida, and I mentioned this the other day because I made a two hour video, I believe, and I talked a little bit about this. But this is going to be a because of more information has come out. And let me say, too, I don't like talking about security and uh, especially security. I was a reserve police officer with a very small police department for, I think over 10 years, I forget how long. I went from patrolman to sergeant. Uh, when I started, there were, there was, when I started actually, there was a town marshal who was elected. I bet he wasn't paid any money at all, or maybe he got $250 a month or what, you know, it was, and then, uh, by the time I got around to being uh, 
trained and uh, certified and all that type of stuff. They it had changed and they had a um, the city council or whatever. I don't know how exactly it worked, a mayor or whatever. It wasn't an elected post anymore. It was uh, the city hired a chief of police and he was paid. Um, but even then, all the department had were reserve officers. And there were seven of us and there are seven days a week. And so each one of us patrolled one night a week. And it was pretty rare for one of us to... I, I never missed uh, the night that I patrolled. But then later on, years later, you know, f first in the beginning, we didn't have a dispatcher. We had to go through the county dispatcher and the county dispatcher for the entire county would have one officer out. And if he drove to the station to have coffee or to sit and visit with it, you know, uh, the dispatcher would totally forget that there were, and it wasn't just us, it was a couple other little tiny towns that used, you know, the radio system with the county. So yeah, when I was out, I was never sure if, uh, if I called, if it was, you know, because when the guy who was patrolling the, the entire county, you know, in the beginning, I didn't know how many that Cass County had on duty. And uh, one time, a car comes, I'm sitting there, you know, on, on in this small town. Well, it was actually a pretty good geographic area. It was, population was low, but it was, uh, but anyway, I'm sitting there and just zoom, here comes a car zipping through there, you know. And then, so I turn on the lights and then a car slows down and then he pulls over and I see it's the Cass County. Uh, so I just, you know, walk up and I say, I, I didn't, I couldn't tell when he came through so fast and he said, uh, I just, and so we talked a little bit, you know, and uh, I said, not much going on here. And I said, it's a good thing. I'm the only one on, he says, I'm the only one for Cass County. I said, you're kidding. He said, no, that's, that's normal here on nights. One sheriff's deputy for the entire county. And then years later, because, uh, anyway, years later, I don't have to go into detail. You know how I am go into another story but years later I uh, was talking to the sheriff and the county did not have enough money to pay for gas for the patrol cars and other things that they needed the budget for the sheriff's department was so small so the sheriff's deputy just stayed basically at the uh, Sheriff's Department in Harrisonville there and didn't go out patrolling. Uh, when a call came in, if one came in, then he drove out. Otherwise, they wouldn't have enough money for gas. So, and that too, especially if you're watching this, maybe, well, even people I think in the United States don't realize. But especially if you're outside the United States, <laughs> the way the, our system works, it, well, if, it, if it works, I'm not sure anymore that it that it works the way things work. It's just unbelievable. So I think I already got sidetracked, but oh, I think I was talking about that. Uh, the first hospital that I worked at in Kansas City, Missouri, I really loved it. The second hospital, I worked there five and a half years. First three years, I loved it, and. The, Things changed. Uh, the next hospital that I I worked at, I hated it from day one. But I stuck around for 18 years. But except I worked at different hospitals. You know that they owned, they built one, and then they purchased every other hospital just about in Kansas City. So I worked at some of those. Um, so that 30 years of experience, I really don't want to think about it, think back about it, or remember it. But it's not, you know, it's not the, the guy that punched me in the mouth. It's not the 
prostitute drug addict female that bit a chunk out of my arm. It's not the people that kicked me. It's not uh, uh, the people that spit on me. But there's a, an area where <laughs> I don't suggest spitting on some police officer. I don't, you know, don't spit on anybody. Uh, because that's something that I'm somebody that has really always been really calm, no matter what happens. But the things that bothered me during those 30 years, and I'll include the police, I did more police work in one night or one week of working hospital security than I did in 10 years or so of, you know, being a police officer, a reserve police officer in a small town. But the, all that stuff that happened to me, I got, I left work one day from a hospital and got a half a block, not even half a block. And I wasn't on duty. I'd punched out and was heading home. Uh, some guys shot at my uh, car. I don't know if they could see my uniform. I don't know if they saw, they were right there. If they, if they saw that I just came out of the parking garage at 10 PM, I don't know, but they shot at me and they hit my car, just missed my head by, just missed my temple by that much. I was in a Volkswagen rabbit. I heard the bang ping. I just kept driving, went on home, then looked at the car and the bullet had hit on the guttering, the rain guttering or whatever right above, you know, right above my head. It's not those people. And just about every night that I worked hospital security, I had to physically, you know, restrain people, put them in leather restraints or put them in handcuffs and have the police take them away. Or uh, it's not those, you know, had to deal with people who were drunk, some of them regulars, you know, uh, what upset me then, and I don't like to think about it now is not that it's the management of the hospitals, the supervision of the hospital, not just the supervision in the security department, but, the department heads above that and hospital administrators and assistant administrators. And I worked at, when I started hospital security at like the first two hospitals, they, they had a hospital administrator and two assistant administrators. By the time I got to the third hospital, they had formed a, well, actually it was after I started there, they formed a corporation and they ended up owning multiple hospitals and an exercise place and uh, a credit collection. I mean, they owned them through the corporation and all this type. Of, it's that type of stuff that those, I don't even want to think about it. And when I do think about it, for some reason, I am not happy. Uh, for the most part, the other security officers I worked with were, I mean, you always get somebody that's an asshole, you know, but I got along with uh, the ones who, except for one hospital, all the, the ones who were assholes, and there weren't very many of them, uh, the ones that were, I managed to get along okay with them. But there was one guy that I hated his guts, and uh, he knew I hated his guts, and he badmouthed me for every day that he had a chance. He badmouthed me. Uh, to everybody and I didn't bad mouth him back for a while and then after a couple of years of that you know after a couple of years of being at this hospital and uh, a couple of doctors I remember you know not at the same time but you know uh, Jim you, you don't get upset easily you know I've noticed and I said no I don't you know I do my job and I don't I try not to let things upset me well, this guy down at the main hospital, I was down there and he said, hey, you work at Research Belton Hospital, don't you? And I said, you know, the doctor said, I said, yeah, and everything. He says, well, just let me tell you, 
that Jim Howard out there is a backstabbing, no, you watch yourself or whatever. And then I had another doctor later, you know, six months or whatever, say, uh, Jim, can I tell you something? He says, I don't think, you know, I don't think it, it'll upset you, but I don't, I don't want to, and I said, no, nah. he, he said, well, you seem like you're, you know, so, so he told me the same, the same thing. It's that type of stuff, though, that did upset me. Uh, just, and it was a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff like that. But all that stuff, you know, has given me sort of an insight on, as soon as I heard of this shooting in Florida, uh, right away there was some female student who was interviewed and uh, said that, you know, she ran out of the school and that she met a friend of hers, a female student, and they were both together and they had run some distance or something or other, but then they stopped and that a security guard told them, run, run, run. And so they did. So I was like, security guard, I, I wonder if he was, you know, I wonder if he was armed. I wonder if he was actually, you know, a police resource officer or off-duty police officer working, or I just wonder what it was. And so then, of course, uh, like the next day or something like that, then the story comes out that the school had a deputy sheriff, Boward County deputy sheriff, and that uh, he did not go into the building. They had him on video outside the building while the shooting was going on. And then I commented about that in a video that I made in the last couple of days. Well, since then, of course, it's come out that uh, three other Bower County deputy sheriffs showed up and they were down behind their cars and they didn't go in while gunshots were going on inside. So I'm thinking, oh, that sounds like a Columbine in Colorado because I remember remember back uh, when it came out that a ton of police and, of course, fire and EMS and everything else showed up and that the police didn't go inside. There were, of course, two shooters with, you know, AK-47s or assault rifles, whatever you want to call them, and they'd taken some type of bomb-type material in there too and that the police did not go in and they got criticized strongly. And I thought, I think they changed their procedures, but maybe it's not, you know. And then uh, watching CNN or something like that, they had on an expert, I think he was a police officer, or anyway, there was he was on and he said, yes, and they said, after Columbine, all the police, and when he says, you know, <laughs> Oh, well, you know, I use that a lot, you know, saying all, oh, and when, even when there's maybe 25 million people who disagree with me and on a polit political, but when I say, you know, all the people are not happy with, you know, but, uh, so he said, you know, all the police departments change their procedures that they, even if there's just one officer you know, you, you go on in. And so that's, you know, we don't know what, if we don't know if Boward County, uh, I'm sure they did because they love doing that kind of stuff. You know, if they held uh, drills and uh, tests and things to, and so, so that everybody knows um, procedure and what they're supposed to do. So, but believe me, some of the law enforcement uh, did in Bower County, or, and I guess there's also, I'm not sure if the, the, the city police responded. I'm not sure if that is in the city also, or if it's outside, you know, because you'd have, of course, all the departments are going to be responding, mutual aid and all that type of stuff. But I wonder if they actually did have 
a plan, an updated plan, and if they had rehearsed it or whatever. But one of the people, I think it was that same guy that I was telling you about that said, oh, you know, they sent Columbine, uh, even if it's a lone officer, he's to go on, you know, go on in. Uh, but I think he's the one that said just, uh, yes, they have a procedure and, and you immediately go in, even if you're the lone officer, unless the command tells you not to. Oh, my God. Because that's, uh, that's one of the things, you know. I mean, uh, did the, uh, I'm sure he didn't, or God, I think he would have said something, but, you know, when the call came in, did the sheriff get on the radio and, or did somebody else get on the, you know, did the sheriff get on the radio and say, uh, you know, we're responding, uh, don't go in until we, until we get there or something, you know, did something like that, uh, go on or happen, but it says here, the state is going to investigate the law enforcement response. Now, people, this is the Boward County Sheriff. And for, again, for, this is for people outside the United, United States. Well, I guess for some inside, too. Uh, damn, CNN's going to start. I want you to take a listen to... Oh. Here, uh, sheriffs are elected. And I don't think that should be... I don't think you should be elected because especially in a small county, or I think maybe in any. I, uh, now here in Texas and in other places, I think in Florida too, <laughs> here in Texas you have, you know, you have your highway patrol. Then you have your Texas Rangers, which really should be in, but, you know, you have your Texas Rangers. Then you have, you know, city police, then you have county, the sheriff's deputies. Then you have, also you have marshals, state marshals. I'm not even sure what in the hell they do. Uh, then you have um, constables. And the constable is for a little district. It's a political, like a voting district or whatever, and they're for that little district, and they are elected. And uh, what they're supposed to do is what sheriff's deputies usually do in most other states, and that's judicial, so they would uh, issue things for the, you know, the court when the judge issues or when an order is issued for a uh, to appear in court for some reason, or if there's a, a restraining order that has to go out, be delivered to somebody, or just all that type of stuff. That's what apparently the constables do. But you have these rural areas, especially, where you have these people elected, and you know, some of these places. They're going to, you know, it's going to be Farmer Joe, you know, is the guy who decides, hey, I'd like to have a patrol because, you know, you get a patrol car, you're have a, you're a full law enforcement officer, you get a patrol car and you get a shotgun in there and they give you a badge and uh, so you don't know what you're, now also like in the state of Missouri or the state of, I came from Missouri, uh, you know, in the state, you'll have, you know, F federal, FBI agents, uh, immigration, uh, drug enforcement, uh, I actually took the test and was for federal protection officer, and uh, a long time ago, and then by the time they got around to, uh, calling me up because they were kept, the federal government kept putting restraints on hot because Republicans don't, you know, didn't want 
And of course, the Democrats would join with him too. You know, oh, government spending is too much. Don't hire any more. Well, I was also hired in by the post office. It took two years for them to get because the government kept putting freezes on hiring more employees. And I uh, actually did then get actually working for the post office. I didn't stay for, you know, very long. But, uh, but anyway, you have federal protective officers that are uh, full, you know, have full police powers, federal police powers. But they're basically uh, guarding, you know, federal buildings and things like, you know, things like that. So, man, you have all this. But we're talking about the school shooting here. So... I think, you know, the, I believe in repercussions. I believe in taking, you know, the buck stops here, like Harry Truman had a sign on his desk, um, President Harry Truman. Now, people are talking about, well, he should be, you know, the sheriff here should be fired. Well, he's elected. Um, Two, something that has always bothered me, and it shouldn't. But I, there's, you know, I, I'm not a compulsive, what compulsive disorder person or whatever. I don't think. If I am a little bit now, I think it started later in life. But I mean, I don't wash my hands every thirty minutes, and I don't do like what. Uh, as good as, what was the movie? Good as, let's see, you know, locking the door. But all these people have different uh, things. But yeah, there are some things now like pictures that are not on the wall, you know, or in my case, it's I have two whiteboards or whatever. But then it's, uh, I should show it to you. <laughs> I have a container right over there. Well, it's, which camera am I using here? Uh, the tripod is stiff. Oh. See the round container down there with the lid on it? It's, it's, I don't think you can tell how big it is, but it's filled with ties, you know, wire ties or whatever for... Um, and so the wiring that I have for the computer, I, I want them together. I tie them to the leg so they go up. And that, so I have, and there's some other things too. Uh, and see the sheriff there has four stars. That type of stuff, you know, when I was a supervisor and I was, only not counting the businesses that I owned. Uh, but when I was a supervisor at a hospital or whatever, uh, I was a sar you know, eventually a sergeant or whatever. I didn't even wear the uh, rank. Even and with the uh, police department, uh, the small town police department, when I made sergeant, I didn't wear the uh, even though we were reserve officers, by the way, the city never treated us or called us reserve officers. The chief of police didn't call us reserve officers. He didn't want us to say we were reserve officers. And even when, after years, they started hiring in, at first they just hired in, well, at first they hired in a dispatcher. So it was reserve officers out there and a full-time, you know, dispatcher. Uh, and then they hired in one police officer for the midnight shift, you know, that was a full-time officer and that type of stuff. And even when uh, they got the full-time officers, uh, since I was a sergeant or whatever, those of us, you know, it was like, you're, you know, okay, you're in charge of, you know, you're a sergeant and this is a, full-time employee and I, I thought that was thought that was ridiculous that uh, 
it should be the full-time police officer is in charge, not some buddy like me that's, uh, you know, been patrolling one night a week for years. Of course, when I say one night a week, every time you had to go to court, that was, you know, we had to have training, you know, all that. That's another thing, yeah. Oh, anyway, this thing about, it bothers me that, and you see it. Uh, I don't care how small the place, you know, Boward County is a pretty good size, but you, you see these guys with five stars or four stars. And even in security, uh, I worked also for a while, for quite a few years, in addition working full-time in-house security. Uh, for 30 years for the in the beginning for the first 10 years or so part-time I worked for contract security and the company you know I'd go into the company to get hired in or whatever and there'd be I went to one place went in there it wasn't Burns, Pinkerton, or Wells Fargo it wasn't any company that you've ever heard of and you probably haven't heard of those maybe Wells Fargo you have uh, I went to this one place went in and there was the owner in a suit or whatever, and there was a bunch of people working, you know, behind the, the deck because they had a, a lot of contracts and a bunch of officers out there. And so I'm sitting there, oh, I'm filling out the form, and I didn't like the form. I forget what it was on the form that I didn't like. And then uh, there were uh, two guys behind the counter in uniform, you know, behind the desk there in the room area or whatever. And uh, then the owner apparently, you know, the owner of the company said, how come us, these uh, uniforms were given to these officers and, and I forget exactly what the thing, how come they weren't signed off on or something like that? And then the, uh, <laughs> the one guy who had, I think like three stars, you know, and apparently he was, he worked in the office, you know, and uh, he said, well, it was, uh, well, so-and-so is the one who, you know, the, the guy that had like four stars or something. Uh, well, he's the one that, that did it and told me to do it or, you know, whatever. And the boss says, but you're in charge of the office and all of this. You're in charge of it. And the guy says, but, but I only have three stars and he has four stars. And I, I just took the application up and threw it in the trash and went to somebody else to get someplace else to get hired into. So this bugs me every time I see these guys. But anyway, this guy can't be fired. I mean, he could be impeached. Uh... Or maybe the state would have some other something they could do, but he, but I think he should resign. Uh, now the right wing Republican uh, people, the and the gun people, he expressed a little bit of interest that yes, we should have some gun con additional gun control, you know, things or whatever. And that was it. They went, you know, liberal, libtard, uh, whatever. And so now that it's come out that um, they're after him like crazy. But I think he should resign. But then it's an elected position. And who are they going to get? I don't know what this guy's background is. It looks like there's a major fuck up with this, you know, school situation. I don't know what his training is. I don't know what his background is or whatever, but same here in the United States with school boards that control grade school and high school. We have in every jurisdiction, and just think how many schools there are. Uh, in the mornings and at night, the roads are filled with school buses. Unified uh, such and such district, you know, whatever, different school buses for different schools. And everything for the school, of course, there are some state laws saying uh, you have to be open, at, you know, X number of days out of the school year. And uh, 
here in the United States, kids get about three months off from school for summer, you know, because in the old days, kids had to help with on the farm bringing the crops in. But you've got these elected school boards who are just, could be some dumbass like me, you know, you can get elected. And uh, they control, you know, they decide what books and all types of, you know, and it's, uh, and Americans, I think, probably love that uh, control, local control of, you know, our schools. We don't want the state, especially the federal government, we don't want the state telling us what to do. And then especially the federal government. We don't want the federal government telling us what to do with our schools. And so if you wonder why <laughs> the United States has, I guess, great universities and colleges, but uh, the local grade and high schools are not so not so great, I'm afraid. Of course, it depends on the district you're in. But, so I don't know, but I think really when you have a, a messed up situation like this that I think the sheriff, sh the sheriff should resign. But I hate to see him do it in a way because the NRA and uh, all the right-wing gun nuts or whatever, oh, they would love that so much. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm not sure if it's, I think it's on here. The NRA is losing, I didn't know they had corporate sponsors. What, I'm not sure what, I mean, they have a, an excellent, well, I haven't seen it in years since I was a member back in the 60s or whatever, but uh, corporate sponsors are disassociating themselves from the NRA big time. Um, which is great. I think there should be consequ you know, consequences for uh, and I think because of the NRA bribing of our politicians and of, and of their uh, lies and everything, I think there should be a, a payback. I'd like to see it some way that, you know, they're making tons of money. The gun manufacturers give them money. <clears throat> I'm sure in some way, real, uh, gun retail gun stores give them money. Uh, corporate sponsors give them money. Um, I'd like to see, I'd like to see some way, and I don't know how it could be done, that, you know, if there are X number of, uh, you know, see, the, the NRA locally and on state, state areas, they have a lot of influence and a lot of power because of the bribing of politicians. Uh, and it, most of us, and I don't fully understand it myself, what they are able to do in the state legislatures that are largely, you know, we have 50 states and I think probably 38 or 40 of them, the state legislatures are Republican. The Republicans have been very smart about, and I've, I, in, my, in the past, there's, you know, elections where I didn't vote or know who, you know, on the local level, you know, if it wasn't, there's probably some elections that, well, let's see, it's not a presidential election, so I won't vote. But the Republicans or whatever, they vote even if it's just a school board election being held, not in with something else, they vote. They were, they were very smart about doing that. Uh, but I, uh, this is going to be one of those long videos and I'm not sure I even covered what I wanted to cover. I don't think I'm doing a good job of it. But anyway, there should be some, too bad we can't tax, you know, 
Okay, well, there were, you know, 50,000 shootings in the United States, you know, last, I'm not sure if that number, by the way, I think it's something like that or more. Uh, I do remember there was 15 in Japan, not school shootings, not mass shootings, 15 shootings in Japan. And I think we're three or four times the size of Japan. So you could do the math, you know, but anyway, we have... Uh, too bad you can't do something like, uh, well, okay, well, there were 50,000 shootings in the United States, gun shootings. Well, did I, I guess, well, no, I know I wasn't on the call, but there was a guy who uh, committed suicide with a crossbow. Um, you know, too bad you can't do something like, well, okay, Oh, that's what, too, what I wanted to mention is the NRA and the pro-gun people on the federal level, they got laws passed that you cannot sue a gun manufacturer. You can sue your babysitter. You can sue a school teacher. You can sue a police officer. You can sue your garbage collector. Uh, your family doctor, the doctor who delivered you, you know, but you cannot sue a gun manufacturer or a gun store. Now, I'm sure, I think, if it's wintertime and you go to the gun store and they didn't clear the ice off the sidewalk in front of their door and you fall and break your hip, I think you could sue, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure you could sue because you cannot sue gun stores and gun manufacturers. Not only that, the NRA has been very clever and like if what few laws or regulations we have concerning, uh, you know, gun regulation or uh, stuff, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly how this works, and I'm sure I'm going to get it wrong a little bit, but if the state or the federal government passes some regulation saying that uh, in order to purchase a gun, uh, you have to be, well, with the instant gun checks, I do know it works this way, uh, that you you have the, the computer runs a background check. You know, do you have any warrants for your arrest or are you in the file of people who have mental disability or whatever? And the NRA and, and the other pro-gun people set it up so if the computer doesn't find the information, maybe another computer that has that kind of information is down for maintenance or somebody hacked it and took it down or whatever. If I forget what it is, like 30 minutes or something rather, or 15 minutes, if the computer doesn't come back and have the results, they have to go ahead and approve you. And then there's a whole bunch of laws in different states that have been passed. Like, okay, the information is collected somehow. Okay, this person I applied for a gun permit uh, and he was approved or disapproved. And uh, so that information, you know, is in the system and the NRA uh, gets laws passed that uh, says that information has to be removed from the system in 30 days. It cannot be transmitted to the federal government. It can't be, although if you apply that maybe that information came from it, it can't, you know, they do this type of stuff to erase this stuff, uh, get it off the records, make it a crime to, you know. Uh, now, there, I don't agree with the people who did this, but someplace there was um, some city or state, or it was a newspaper that did it, but they printed everybody who had received a name and address or whatever of everybody who had a concealed weapons permit. I don't approve of I don't approve of them doing that, but they have, you know, all types of 
oh no, you can't do, you know, you can't do, can't do that. So, uh, Trump's military parade, Trump approval rate, it's the lowest that it's ever been. I think it's 35% though. Um, anyway, uh, oh, it's too bad we can't have a lot, say, okay, 50,000 uh, shootings in the United States last year. Okay, for every, for this, you know, coming year or whatever, for every shooting over 50,000, the NRA or gun owners or gun shops, and, I, you know, you'd have to figure it out, uh, have to pay a tax of X amount of money. And, you know, you get it, you would get it to the point where, wait a minute, you know, uh, do we, you know, we want to, so the NRA, yeah, we want everybody to have a gun, but this is costing us money. We're losing more money than we're getting the money in, you know, to to bribe people or whatever. And the same, you know, same with a gun. You know, some of these gun shops, somebody comes in and the, they're waiting for the answer to come back on the thing and the, the person behind the counter is, man, I hope this guy doesn't live around, you know. And then it comes back, approved, okay, you're approved. And then the guy, I'm sure, in some cases, okay, uh, I need some ammunition for this gun I just bought. Uh, I want some 30 round clips for it. Okay, I want the bullets that uh, stop the person the most, you know. Uh, do you have some that have poison in the, you know? and the tips or whatever, you know, I mean, just, and the, the person there, you know, okay, this person was approved, but I hope this guy, probably they go, okay, yeah, okay, well, he's from the next county over, thank God, you know, but it would it'd be, uh, yeah, maybe <laughs> it should be, uh, if you own a gun store and the person that you sell the gun to, if they go and do something horrendous with the gun, maybe the tax should be so much that you go, oh my God, I got, you know, I'm, I'm having to pay. Of course, I don't know. They make so much money because after every one of these shootings, I haven't heard about this shooting, but after the Sandy Hook shooting, and I forget which type of assault rifle or military weapon that the guy used, to kill the 20 children and three or four teachers or whatever. The gun I saw on uh, on the news, gun stores were saying, well, we had, people were buying them occasionally and we had uh, 10, 15 of them here in stock, but the next day people came in and bought all 15 of them and people are coming in every day and people are calling wanting to buy the same gun that this you know killer used and that's been the situation that we've had. If you're in another country, you probably don't believe this. You probably cannot believe the way it, you know, the way it is. Now, those people buying that gun, wanting the same one that the, I, you know, the shooting in Las Vegas, I had never, you know, I used to be a long time ago an NRA member. I loved the American Rifleman, their magazine. I said goodbye to them though when they started, get, when it was back then and before that when I was a member, they were great, you know. They taught and they still do uh, shooting. In fact, they, the killer here in, uh, <laughs> in Florida went to at least one of their training courses and they taught him how to shoot his weapon. Uh, but, you know, they did safety, they did hunting, they still do hunting courses on hunting safety. Of course, all that stuff gets you to buy, you know. But anyway, I have, and I had to carry a gun. Well, my first 10 years of working, I was a welder, so I didn't have to carry a gun. Well, I had, when I was at work, a SIG welding gun, not a SIG, not the SIG, you know, a uh, uh, welding, you know. Uh, but for the last 30 years or so of my life, I had to, had to carry a gun. 
the small town that I was a reserve officer for, uh, their thing was that you are, to, even though, uh, even though we were reserve officers, uh, you you have to care. You have to be armed whenever you, uh, whenever you're in the city. Uh, there again, I'm not sure that's a good idea because uh, you see so many shootings of like New York City and places where police officers shoot each other, or whether a police officer is at home and he hears something outside. And he's, of course, not in uniform, and he goes out, police arrive, and fucking shoot him. Uh, it's just, you know, yes, you're a law enforcement officer all the time, but um, it's just like, uh, well, I don't want to go into that whole thing, but... Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure what can be done with this. I So anyway, let me, let me talk about something else. Um, if you're here in the United States, there is this nextdoor.com. I, I imagine if you go to nextdoor.com. And what it is, uh, it's like a message board, a community message board or news group for your area. And so they have it cut down. And this is the area that I happen to be in. And so it's a fairly small area and you have information being posted here for the people. And you have people commenting, like here's somebody that said uh, that he's in the falls apartment and that there were two black males trying all the doors on cars. And then they, they went out and, and you have a lot of lost dogs uh, found dogs, and then people selling items or whatever. So pretty neat. So if you're here in the United States, you might check out nextdoor.com. Uh, I'm not sure I ever used Craigslist, but Craigslist, you hear so much about, and Craigslist, I think is, I think it's localized too. But I wouldn't use Craigslist for, you hear about an awful lot of people being, uh, well, you hear a lot about people being victims because of Craigslist. There was just one recently that I didn't read or hear about, but somebody told me about that a lady wanted to sell her jewelry. And the person who contacted her said, okay, well, uh, I'll meet you at such and such a shopping mall or in front of such and such a store, Walmart or something. And so she takes her jewelry there. And of course the guy, uh, I'm not sure if he killed her, if he just robbed her or whatever. Can't remember now the details, but I don't recommend Craigslist at all. But this is something you might check out. Uh, I was gonna mention this, but I'm not going to now. It's just, I wanted to point out to you that uh, This is a right right wing site, and they take items. They talk about the uh, the shooting, and of course they blame the uh, <coughs> sheriff. <coughs> and they talk about gun grabbers don't care about the AR-15. They're after all the guns. Um. <laughs> uh, but then uh, sometimes I think what I should do is actually take items from the news and try to show you because for some reason I'm not, I take no credit for it. It's just, I have an ability uh, to recognize information that is propaganda or is lies or is incorrect. Uh, I even tested I'm not bragging because I, I, I tested on math, like 95% of the people were better at math than I was. And then I tested on ability to read and I forget how they put it. I didn't know they had a classification for that. 
the ability to uh, uh, recognize the truth or uh, see conflicting. I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly what they how it was classified, but I was in the, like top five percent of the United States of the people who were tested in having that ability. I can't take any credit for it, but I think I I think I could take and maybe we could take some story and uh, you know cooperative because then you could you could but I should limit it to one video for one you know not throw in the rest of this garbage just take one thing and uh, read it and then say here is inconsistencies and this is not correct and you should know not because you're just doing like fact checking it's not that okay uh, the uh, pro-gun people say that uh, X number of people uh, did this or that. And then you don't, you know, I wouldn't go and look up and say, no, their number is wrong. But you look up the other, you look at the other type of information. That's more important to me. Because <clears throat> anybody should be able to look up. Of course, they won't because... If, let's say, the information was from Wikipedia or whatever, and it didn't suit, say, the pro-gun people, they'd say, well, that's false news and and uh, blah, blah, blah. So, but there should be other. And now, of course, a lot of people are not going to see it. I, <clears throat> for years, was, uh, in addition to being a supervisor, I was departmental training officer and and other things. And... Like there were some people that, I should, like a female, great officer, security officer, a really nice lady, and she did her job. She carried her more than her weight of doing stuff, but I could not get her to, you know, even though using, okay, you know, who, what, where, when, and why, and using, okay, make the first part of the report is, you know, you were contacted or you saw this or whatever that's the first you know that's the first part of the report you know you responded you got there this is what I saw part two this is can't even remember now this is you know the uh, what went on part three you know the person was uh, released or the person was arrested and officer so-and-so from the police came and you know here's the report number you know no matter what I tried, it just did not work. She just could not, you know, comprehend it. I, that was fine. I mean, she worked with me or with somebody else who could, and that was just, we just, we just handled it. But, so that's something. But anyway, we're not going to, I'm not, I probably will never do it. Uh, wanted to mention Remember when I bought my, which I've hardly used at all, my uh, G7 camera. I haven't really used it at all. And I said the problem was that I would want, because it was my first, well, of digital, first camera that was had interchangeable lenses that I knew what would happen. I would decide I needed and so I'm uh, thinking about getting this lens. So then I'll have two lenses. And God forbid that uh, you know I'm using this wide screen. Let's see if you can. Oh my God! I don't know if I can get. Oh no! Let's see. Well, anyway. This is a 24-inch widescreen monitor. This is a 29-inch, you know, regular monitor, 1080 by... Uh, whoa. 1080, whatever, 1920 by 1080. And I thought, this is plenty wide enough, because you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing now. Uh, 
that's what this screen is. So I have things side by side. So I can, I can move, you know, that's what. So you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing on this screen. Actually over here, this little bar down here, I put it over here. This is the controller for, um, you know something? I just remembered I used this the other day and I think it kicks off after one hour and restarts. So you may not be, it may have just uh, 30 seconds ago kicked. Anyway, I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye. You may not even see me saying goodbye because I've talked long enough. Thank you very much for watching.